Twitch has achievements. <laughs> um, I don't know how to feel about that. Also, apparently Odd One is streaming Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and it has Neon, the thumbnail. Just wanted to mention that. Nothing special. <laughs> and this screen. The game is not suitable for children, for those who are easily disturbed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, what am, what's going to happen here? I. It's, it's not going to be good, is it? Um... Hold on, I'm still trying to get my bearings here. I'll be actually starting soon enough. Hold on just a second. I keep minimizing the window I want to keep up. Uh, let's see. Is this, no, that's not what I want. Oh, uh, that's odd. Is that what it says? Yeah, no, okay. Um. Almost. Scraped it right that time. Okay, I guess I will start. Um, start this, and we'll see what happens. Um, supposedly, I won't get to the good stuff tonight. Um, hold on, I just need to get to my damn channel on my phone so I can see chat. And oh my god, why does the app have to be so terrible? Where? There we go. God, nothing is like consistent on Android anymore. Okay. I think I'm ready. Almost. Um I'll just I'll just, just just yeah, that'll work. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. For content warnings, please visit http uh, let's do that. Can I copy paste? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. I can't. I, 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 I can't see the warnings. I Going in blind. I agree. And I'm 13 years of age, and your consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Sore throat. I will. Hey! It's the Fonz. I see an annoying girl running towards me from a distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. It just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to watch school together on days like this. Start, or starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Then do it! Save yourself the, the despair this game is apparently going to bring you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <laughs> don't run so fast. I overslept again. I caught you this time. 
maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Yeah. I can tell she's supposed to have an annoyingly cute voice, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> she's going to get a raspy sore throat voice. Eh, yeah, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. Yup, totally was. That's mean, Alex. Yup, I'm a big meanie. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Sure. Exactly. This, this. Apparently, I'm actually in the game. Whatever you say, it's your. Eh. Cute little blue Peter Griffin laugh. Eh. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. Apparently I've been told it starts off very slow. By the way, Alex, you decided on a club to join yet? I am going to join the Not Literature Club. Apparently that's it's the one that leads to terrible bad things. I'm assuming Steam told me this game was similar to Danganronpa, and I was like, ah, I see, so shit's gonna happen. I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs quite slow to begin with. Yes, I can tell. I haven't been looking either. Sounds like me. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join the club this year. I lied, clearly. Did I? I'm sure it's possible I did. In one of our many conversations where I just missingly go along with whatever she's going on about. Also sounds like me. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on average on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Also sounds like me. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Also a bit like me. <laughs> Mainly the socializing. Three days of school before things, things get cray. Okay. Sounds a bit like Danganronpa 2. I'm pretty sure it was like three days before the first murder happens. <laughs> well, it's not quite a school. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a need in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Trust me, right? Nah. Don't make me keep worrying on you. Alright, then stop worrying. Well, I got a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Well, will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Hey, don't go making promises you can't keep, alright? Oh, guess I promised anyways. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Good question, me. Why are you letting yourself do that? More than that, I'm surprised to even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease, ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside her head. Alright, woo, it's school. Oof, so boring. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I knew it, or know it. That is not an ordinary school day. Those things drag on, don't lie. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Of motivation of what? To leave and go home? Clubs. Well, clearly you're not looking at the right clubs. Don't look for the school clubs. Go out clubbing. <laughs> That'd be great if that's actually what happens. You just screw the school clubs. <laughs> Sarah wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Sounds good. What about the gaming club? Maybe we can play some Dota. Join a pro esports team. CSGO something. <coughs> Hello, Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. Thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. No need to wait up for me as if, or if it's going to make you late to your own club. I don't know. I'm gonna go to her club. <laughs> well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, you know what? Well, I think you come to my club. Yep, there it is. Good job, me. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. 
Eh, I, I, I can't, I can't do that. Eh, meanie. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be such an annoyingly cute anime voice, and I just, I, no. I can imagine it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. No, it's clearly the Doki Doki Literature Club. Duh. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of vice president. No, who's the president, president? Oh, I guess the one who proposed it. I see, I thought they had left. No, I, I totally misunderstood. <coughs> That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I might I would bring in a new member. And that's not gonna be me, right? And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Resist the cupcakes. Cup. Make promises you can't keep. That's what I said, and now you're trying to join a club. I can't tell if Siori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. She clearly planned it out. And, um, other me in the game is clearly weak willed in the weenie and just goes along with whatever she says. I let out a long sigh. So did I, because. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! She probably let out a squee there or something, I don't know. Unless today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs. That cupcake is a pretty cheap price for a soul. He could do better than that. This section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! Squiggly exclamation point. She actually said that, by the way. I told you, don't call me a new member. Yeah? I think mean, that's around the room. Girl 1. Oh, glad she has a name. Girl 1. Hi, Girl 1. Welcome to the Lich Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. I, I feel like question marks would be better. I don't know. That's just me. Sayori always says nice things about me. Always, huh? Seriously? You brought a boy? Uh, seriously? It's a club full of girls? Way to kill the atmosphere. I hate her already. <coughs> oh, Alex, what a nice surprise. What, do they all know about me? Welcome to the club. Dot, dot, dot. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Oh no, there's the Doki Doki. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S -s -s sorry I just never talked to a girl before, apparently. Natsuki. Oh, I know who. She's a cupcake girl. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude is named, apparently, Natsuki. Is the one, is one I don't recognize. I apparently didn't recognize all of them, because they were girl 1, 2, and 3. Small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes according to Siori, so let's just call her Cupcake Girl. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. I'm already ignoring her. Siori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. This is uh, Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears or comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, oh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? <coughs> That's right. It's great to see you again, Alex. Do I know her? <coughs> Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, really talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You, you too, Monica. Uh, 
Uh-oh, apparently other me has a crush. Maybe. <laughs> Come sit down, Alex. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. Look at the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Does it doesn't matter who gets the cupcakes. Sorry, I got a little too excited. How about I make some tea as well? Where are you gonna make tea in the classroom? I guess you can have a hot plate. Girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. The story you mentioned has been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Siori. Suki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Suki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! That's exactly how she sounded. You know, all the deep ooh. Maybe like a whale? Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes that are decorated to look like little cats. They're cat cakes! Or, why can't they be cookies so they can be cookie cats? Come on! The whiskers are drawn with the icing. Little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were good at baking, Natsuki. I assume I'm pronouncing his name right. I, I have no idea. Eh, well, you know, just hurry and take one. Oh, she's trying to be modest. Sarori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. <coughs> Why are you telling me to shut up? <laughs> you can't tell me to shut up. I'm the streamer. I do what I want. <laughs> Anyways, Sarori grabs one. Oh, yeah, I, I read that. I have a cupcake. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. Nice. I turn the cupcake around my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. How about you just take a bite out of the damn cupcake? It's not, it's not like I have to have a plan of attack. <coughs> Atsuki is quiet. Can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She waiting for me to take a bite? Well, take the bite! Unless it's poisoned, in which case, you're already dead because you took the bite. Icing is sweet and full of flavor. She made it herself. This is really good. Clearly, because uh, I just bit the cupcake. It, I have my mouth has to be full. Oh no, she's one of those. What is it? it? I don't know how to pronounce it. Like Sundere, Sundere. I don't know. What? Why are you thanking me? It's not like I. Uh, the only thing she needs to say is baka. Oh, apparently I have heard this somewhere. There we go. There we go. There it is. <laughs> I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for you. No, that, yep, there's, there's Baka. She said it. She said it. Is my cursor on the screen? I have no idea. Yeah, it is. I feel like for Frigil, no, this crap in the cursor would be a good show on the screen. I don't know why. Anyways, I'm a dummy. I'm a baka. Alright, alright. I gave up on Hitsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. That took a long time. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I rarely drink tea, and I rarely read books nowadays. Oh shit, I should make tea for my sore throat though. Ah, I'm gonna go do that. Um, hold on just a second. I actually have some ginger, and um, <laughs> I've been wanting to do this because sore throats suck. Uh, I hate to like do this in the middle of the stream, but I'm gonna do that when I got home. I'll just make regular tea. That's all I really need. Uh, I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back temporarily. Uh, cool thing is, I have an actual tea kettle, and it whistles, and it's great. Uh, I might be able to hear it through the mic <coughs> when it goes off. I'll definitely be able to hear it. My... I'm wheeling over a cable. I don't like it. Alright, let's... Let's move on. Uh, I guess. What, what did I say? Uh, history. Oh yeah, sure. And don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Are they all trying to impress me? That I just come and walk into a, a harem visual novel here? Eh, that, that's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I guess I at least do enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Uh, plot, Sayori, in apparently a week will... Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... Lies. That's okay, don't be embarrassed. I'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You'd probably be a board member for any of the uh, major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and pub publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. But then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are interested in and very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. Not enough explosions. You need, you need good marketing, you need explosions, some good special effects, and merchandise characters. You need Porgs and Olafs and BB-8s. Anyways, you have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. It makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all learn. We can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah, we'll do our best. You know it. Yeah, that's my enthusiastic um, agreement. Yeah. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Alex, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, probably manga, if he's... and me, whatever, and anime. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Yep, there it is. I win. What do I win? <laughs> I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. And there's the tea. I'll be back again. Oh gosh, that's louder than I thought it would be. <laughs>
All right, now I have my tea. Um, it goes like any other tea I make. I'm going to forget about it. It's going to get really cold, and then tomorrow morning I'll wake up and be like, oh yeah, I made that. <laughs> um, also, in my stupidity, when I moved here, I didn't bring any of my uh, mugs here. I have mugs, but they're a little more like beer mugs. Uh, so I have this tea and a nice pint glass. Just half full, so I don't burn myself when I try to drink it. Gosh, that's really steamy. <laughs> I'm gonna have to really let that uh, settle down. Ah, stupid game music. Oh, um, I can't hear the difference. Um, I feel like that'll be good. My mic level's going up pretty far above the desktop audio at this point. How's that? Hmm, how is it? I guess I don't need your feedback. <laughs> okay, good. Alright, I muttered myself quietly half-joking about the manga that because I'm a big anime nerd. Big gaming anime nerd. Whoop. Alright, I think that's steeped enough. Alright. Oh, that's gonna get everything all wet. Might want more paper towel. Ooh, no, I'll put it in this other glass I have here for no good reason. There we go. Alright, now I have, like, flaming hot tea that I can't drink for, like, ten minutes. Alright, I'm muttering about manga. Let's look, ooh, 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 do we have another anime nerd in the group? Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Or is she gonna, like, tell me off? It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. <laughs> Not much of a reader, I guess. <coughs> well, that can change. What am I saying? I'm just saying that to impress the girls. Woo! Oh. I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Poor Yuri. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Let's see if I can guess. Um. Let's see. If she reads a non. If it's a literature club, I can't imagine it being non fiction. But I guess it could be, too. Um. She reads romance. Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. Oh, 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 I actually thought of fantasy for a bit, but I figured she'd be a bit more, uh, stereotypical, I guess? I don't know. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. You seem so rever reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her, li her eyes light up, not her lies eyed up, that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Well, that's vague and helpful. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. <coughs> <coughs> that wasn't Yuri, that was me. Just... Isn't it amazing how a writer can be can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Sure. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I read a horror book once. So did I. It was called Goosebumps. <laughs> I read. I actually read a lot of the Choose Your Own Adventure Goosebumps. I really liked those. Um, I particularly remember one. I think it takes place in a department store and there's a heart attack backpack that, like, if you put it on, it tightens the straps until it gives you a heart attack. It's a pretty terrible way to go. <laughs> Anyways, this reminds me of the Steam Store page. <laughs> uh, or no, the game page. The first headline, Doki Doki Literature Club is a hidden horror game for the internet age. So yeah. Um, I'm bracing myself, but I don't know for what. <laughs> Desperately try to grasp something I can relate to at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <coughs> really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. You're the president of the literature club. Shouldn't you know these things? How long has this been club been going on? Like, 
half an hour. <laughs> Someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. What if she's the horror? She's an ancient uh, Lovecraftian horror deity whatever about to destroy the world. This is the way she does it. This is how he sneaks onto our plane of existence. Yeah. This game fucked you up and now you want it to fuck me up. I see how it is. This tea is still steaming. I don't know if I should drink it yet. <laughs> but if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world if only for a brief moment. I feel like there's a, a whole reason they're going over this right now. Surreal... Damn it. Alright, fine. Ugh, I hate horror. I'm with you, Natsuki. Let's get out of here. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Just say it. You're a scaredy cat. I am too. You don't have to... It's, it's nothing to be afraid of. You know, it's, it's not about pride. Natsuki's <laughs> eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. Aw, oh, trying to act all tough for me. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Ooh, you've been outed. You like unicorns, don't you? What gives you that idea? Probably the cat cupcakes. You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. Ooh, read it to the class. Looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. Do it. Do it. Say it. And give that back. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, I wanted to see it. What is this? Oh, <laughs> you did warn me. <laughs> uh, hey, it's your fault. <laughs> Fine, fine. Eh, your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. <laughs> Whoa there. Sorry. This isn't that kind of game. Oh, shoulders. Okay. Oh, she's not cute, guys. Don't worry. She's not cute at all. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Too embarrassed. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. <coughs> you must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Doki Doki Lesbian Club. <laughs> that. That would be an appropriate name for a um, different kind of game. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, we can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. <laughs> no. <coughs> I guess it's the same for Yuri. <coughs> Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. I'll write a poem. All right. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I was gonna do a haiku with the game Grumps. It's snowing on Mount Fuji, but uh, it'll take too long. I don't want to count syllables. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Question mark. Tsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um, just don't write a love poem or something. Write one about, like, tea. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, of course, Sari would be the energetic one. <coughs> Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of this club. Ugh. That just reminds me of Rex and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh... <laughs> Beat them with the power of friendship. God, that's so anime. Isn't that right, Alex? Sure, yeah. Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. Why am I playing this game, right? Oh, no. I never said I would join this club. Sari may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. Think of the cupcakes! I still have other clubs to look at. And, um, you're gonna look at the anime club, and, like, that's it. <laughs> well, it was my train of thought. Yeah. 
That's what I thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry. I thought, hmm. <laughs> Alex, you, you, you've all, all. Uh, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Oh, whatever. Just join the damn club. That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Oh, okay. Right. <coughs> I've decided then, apparently. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. I mean, I'd come for the cupcakes. <laughs> and that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. <coughs> huh. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Ever remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Alex, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. That's my reaction. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Alex, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Siri and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay, she's all happy. <coughs> With that, the two of us depart to club room and make our way home. The whole way my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Oh, shut up. It's better than going home and being bored. <laughs> Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Ooh, do I get to write it? No, of course not. It'd be cool if they gave me choices, though. Oh my god, I'm actually going to write the poem. Never mind, then. <laughs> it's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Alright. <coughs> um, what are we going for? <laughs> Pain. <laughs> uh, so I just gotta pick words. Oh, hey. Let's save. I don't know why. Let's do it. Alright, help me out with this poem. Oh, it's up to me. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, do I. Nothing? Okay, nothing happens to them. Um, let me see if my tea is cool enough. Mm, not quite. <laughs> um, let's pretend this isn't going to turn into a game that's probably filled with horrors and things. We'll go with warm. Um, oh, <laughs> kawaii. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> lazy. We'll go with lazy. What? Sayori likes lazy? <laughs> Don't be frightening the lust. Suicide. Clumsy. Blanket. I like blankets. Philosophy. Summer. Empty. Fantasy. Beauty. And, and if effulgence. Um, hold on a second. <laughs> Define effulgence. Uh, shining brightly. Radiant. Alright, well. I don't like the word. Radiance is nice. Passion day. Oh, go daydream. Poor Yuri, all alone over here. Alright, let's go with alone, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sayori. <laughs> you like being alone? <laughs> I don't know. Do I have to pick a girl? Can I just not pick words I want? <laughs> oh, I see. I'm supposed to get attached to one of them. <coughs> Natsuki's kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Rainbow. Oh, okay. It's gonna be one of them, apparently. Uh, sparkle. Okay, apparently I don't know what I'm going for here. 
Sunny. All right, apparently I don't know Q. I guess I'm going for Sayori then. <laughs> Vibrant. Really? Shiny. I, I Apparently I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Twirl. Parfait? Let's go with Parfait. Yeah. Ooh, oh, that's right. Because she likes manga, but she doesn't want anyone to know. Doki Doki. There we go. I'm getting it. Uh, let's see. Silly would be Sayori. Tenacious giving mouse comfort memories. Destiny? Color. Okay, nope. Uh, boop! Gotta go with Boop. I don't care who it, who it goes for. And then Vivacious. What? Ray, intellectual, loud nature. The full Valentine? Yeah. And candy. I did it, I think. <laughs> oh, I'm already back at school. That was quick. Apparently, classes don't take any time at all. And breakfast isn't a thing. Even sleep. Let's try the tea again. Still a little warm. Hi again, Alex. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. I probably spaced out in class again. Thanks for keeping your promise, Alex. No prob, Bob. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Oh, yeah, writing a poem. Oh, that is commitment. I'm a Surprised I even made it this far. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not acc <coughs> accustomed to it. <coughs> yeah, see, I have that sore throat. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Shut up. <laughs> I'll go back and pick a different girl. Sarah told me he didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. <laughs> If you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> nice. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Alex always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work with, uh, without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? Ah, that little stuffy nose. Might be a little jealous. How come? You and Alex can become good friends, too. Um... S Sayori... Huh? Dot, dot, dot. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, whatever. Oh, oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori? Well, then why'd you even bring it? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Well, clearly it is nothing now. Siri made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. No, you're making it the big deal. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So it's a nice gesture. Oh, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. Now you're making it a bigger deal. <laughs> It'll make me happy no matter what. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Ah. Man. This stuffy nose is kicking my ass. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. I'm gonna make it a big deal. Alright. <clears throat> well, here. 
Yuri reaches in her handbag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even when you don't usually read. Are you telling me I have a short attention span? And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Oh yeah, we, we can totes discuss it. Wink, wink. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. What is it? I want to know what the book is. You can't just give me a book and not tell me what it is. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Alright. Fine. I just have a nameless book. That's cool. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect or I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sari and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she is waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging, rummaging, rummaging around in the closet. Ugh! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Hi. What is up, my friend? Looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just going to mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, yeah, I totes said that. Sometimes, uh, sure. Long as one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until... Whatever, just deal... Uh, I forget, they're in high school. Uh, this things Im these things are important to them. Fucking... I don't care if someone knows. I don't read manga because I don't get it, but... If I did, I'd be like, yeah, I don't just read it. How did you know? Anyways, oh my god, did you not... Other me already forgot about it. I heard you bring it up at some point. Duh. Other me is stupid. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a <coughs> lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. <coughs> ah. Curious. I pull it out of the stack. Ooh. There it is. Oh. I was hoping it'd be something steamy. Atsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. Ing. I mean, I guess I can't say anything. I'd totally say something like that too. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. What is it? Parfait Girls. This series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. It could be both. If you're going to judge, you can do it through the glass on the door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, hey I wasn't judging or anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Alex. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. Great. I think I have a reading assignment down. No. Oh, no. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah. I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated, animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe. I think that's how it's pronounced. Don't just stand there. Um, uwa? Is that is that what it is? Uwa? Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. I thought that said windmills at first, and I was like, why are there windmills in the classroom? <laughs> she pats on the ground next to her, signaling to me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Uh, what's that? Uh, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. 
Aw, oh, you just made her blush. D don't just say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Oh, come on. Natsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. S sorry. I didn't expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long is it since been a, since I began the since I read the beginning? Mm -hmm. No spoilers, Natsuki. Come on, you can't you can't give me any spoilers. You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then. Not really. <laughs> Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. <coughs> Terrible. I didn't get anything for this sore throat. I should have. Looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Oh, look. It's just like this game, right? Except... <gasps> I'm the fourth girl. Oh, shit. Oh, damn. I'm the fourth parfait girl, guys. I just cracked the code. Typical slice of life affair. Kind of grew out of these, since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Man, I'll say something though. I watched, I think it was, I don't know how to pronounce this, like Clannad After Story on, I think, Crunchyroll. That's a slice of life thing, and it's, that's a very sad show. I mean, I guess it technically ends happily, but holy shit, it gets really sad. <laughs> so, don't knock the slice of life stuff, man. It can be really good. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be plot? <laughs> Probably the wrong thing to ask. Well, obviously. Why not just tell her you like Naruto better? <laughs> you think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps get you or helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. And like, when they go into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really when it makes it... Uh, I skipped... I went too fast. That's really what makes it good. Or so good. There are so many touching parts... Ah, is that so? Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. Eh, <laughs> uh, underestimating. That's, that seems to be like such an anime trope. At least from my experience and very shonen kind of things. Don't underestimate me! And then they power up or something and they scream at the top of their lungs and then another fight ensues and then the power of friendship or some other nonsense saves the day. I don't know. All right, let's continue on. Hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? It what? That's just how I'm going to say that from now. I'm not even sure what that sound is supposed to be. <laughs> Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just meant I that I haven't seen you at your full power. Don't don't do this. You don't have to be anime about this. Hm, good save. Well, apparently it was a good save. No, okay. Ah. This chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well... Tsuki pauses for a moment. It is called Parfait, girls. Come on. As <laughs> if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah. What does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's... Oh, that's right. She made the cupcakes. Just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like, I would never get anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anyone that's that impressionable. Your face does not convince me. <laughs> I imagine that as like a Laharl laugh. Um, I should get a soundboard. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. Laharl's laugh from Dis uh, Disgaea is great. I love it. 
I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. <laughs> Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Right? She could have been like a ninja. <laughs> oh my god. She could, she could be a total weeb. But instead, she's a baker. She's like Pantheon. Not to mention, she's really good at it. So who am I to judge? Yeah, you can't judge a book by its cover. We read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read. Well, I'm fine with that. If you... <coughs> <coughs> I just coughed all over her face. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something that you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a, a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Question mark? Hmm? You don't? Um... That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. Are you saying you have no friends? What do you mean? Don't you share your... Here we go. Could you not rub it in? <laughs> Alright. Jeez. Ah, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. She, she does have friends. But a pet... <laughs> I, I guess that's right. I guess manga isn't supposed to be like a cute thing. Like, I could ever get my friends to read this. I just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without them being all like, You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch... Oh, that's she's not imitating them again. Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser. Well, okay. If you want to say that, <laughs> I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. You just called her a loser. <laughs> but it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. No, she doesn't seem to care, apparently. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe in here in the club room. Except Monaco's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like it solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Hyphen! That is a hyphen, right? Dot, dot, dot. So? Aha! Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, dumb laugh. This is starting to kind of drag. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. <coughs> Minori is my favorite character. I always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Hey! Spoilers! Exactly. See? See? Just finished this chapter. Gosh, I can't believe she almost spoiled it for me. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone, but if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me a smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone. Huh? Eh? Are you all ready for today's poems? Oh, we're doing that, right? Oh, come on. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry, I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty co cozy over there. Oh, look, she's all embarrassed. And Suki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches from me. All right. Guess I'll stop here for now. Close the book and hand it towards Satsuki. You're just going to give it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Oh, yeah, but... Monica just said, don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Huh? Is that really alright? It's uh, mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> By tomorrow. Look, if you don't bring it back, she won't know if it gets bent. I only got it partway through the volume so far. 
I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. I don't know. I would imagine it's faster to read manga, manga, whatever, than it is to watch anime. Um, I remember reading um, One Punch Man and World Trigger out of Shonen Jump for a while. And, I mean, I guess out of Shonen Jump it's a little different because there's only small sections per manga, but... I mean, you can get through each section they have every issue, like, pretty quick. Anyways, it's definitely not like watching Dragon Ball Z. doesn't take a whole book to see um, Goku transform into a Super Saiyan the first time, that's for sure. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? All right then, I stand up. Yeah. Return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, I wrote down a bunch of words like pain. I think I did pain. I don't remember cupcake, rainbow. Yeah, I don't think it counts as a poem though. <coughs> my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their palms. Yeah, they... okay. <laughs> Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers on a, com a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I see sit. Hatsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their backs. I do the same myself. Who should I sew my poem? Let's, let's do Natsuki. Bam. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably on the fair she shared mine with her first. Question mark? Okay. Well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Don't say all of it. <laughs> Oh, what? Never mind. I don't feel like giving your opinion. <laughs> What's the point of sharing in the first place? Well, this one I could have been doing other things. Uh, in fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I hope you feel comfortable enough to share yours, like Monica said. Eh. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> there we go. There it is. <laughs> okay, that's that's all I needed. <laughs> well <laughs> god damn it. I fucking love that video. Well, I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. Oh, she liked it! I think. <laughs> you were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, ha, huh, well that's not that great, but let me show you what a real literature looks like. <laughs> what a real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. Oh my god. Dot dot dot. So in other words, you're saying you liked it. <laughs> Irk! I don't know what that sound's supposed to be either. Suitcase retort gets caught in her throat. Uh, hold on, got to do it again. I closed the tab, but I can get it back. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> definitely need a soundboard. <coughs> uh, hold on, I think I need to get a tissue or something.
man, stuffy nose, runny nose, sore throat. I can't wait for all this to go away. <coughs> Clip on, you stupid thing. There we go. You just don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. And I wasn't announcing it to the world. I was announcing it to you. I say that mostly to myself. And Suki really must hate me or something. Nah, she's embarrassed, man. Can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, still need to show me yours, right? Eh? Eh? Show you mine if I show you, or you show... Just, just, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagle... Oh, that's the title. And then, okay. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Click outside poem area to continue. That's cutesy. I mean, mine was just a bunch of random words, so technically I think you did better. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. That's my reason for a lot of things. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people didn't even, like, take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Ugh. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. <coughs> Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. There's her smug look again. <laughs> That's what it means to be a pro! What if her voice was actually like that? Just all, like, grisly. That's what it means to be a pro! I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did ya? <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> Decide to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. <coughs> Who should I go show my poem to next? Let's go to uh, the Monika. Hi, Alex. Having a good time so far? Yeah, I found out Natsuki actually has like a deep grizzly voice. Oh yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, like become a horror game, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, so what? Is after day three things turn to shit? Is that is that what it was? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. Much better just going off with the flow or going with the flow until I'm more settled in. That's also me. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Alex. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Brain fart. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Alex. Really? Wait. Monica wasn't in the... the poem setup. It was just Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri. What's going on here? Tell me. Fine, play your arc, see if I care. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> I, I seriously don't know how to do these laughs here. 
I imagine if I were a voice actor. <laughs> you <laughs> no, you play game. All right, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Well, something's up with Monica. <laughs> oh jeez. No, no. Kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. <laughs> She's a good writer too. So take that as a compliment. Ah. Uh -huh. If you say so. Yup. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? Like the... Oh, shit. Um, fuck. Where the sidewalk ends, yeah. God, I had some of his books, and I don't know where they are. Don't make me sad, Monica. Eh, maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. Sometimes they're only a few lines long. Now I actually want to read some. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be kind of a poem to explore. <coughs> Are you calling me simple? Is that what you're doing here? I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. I'm on to you, Monica. Something's wrong with you. It's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about imperson or impressing them or anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the game wanted me to impress someone. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. Sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? <coughs> Sore throat. I see. Well, let's read it then. A hole in a wall. Okay, you haven't got a scroll bar in your paper. You're fancy. It couldn't... <coughs> Shit. That's not part of the poem, I swear. I like how the music kind of changes. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Okay. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. <laughs> you can see forever! A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. I, I, I don't get it. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Eh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That's, that is, a lot of poems have to be... I've been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Um, apparently a hole in the wall. Duh, didn't you read it? Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a lot. <sighs> okay, hold on. Because there's clearly something going on with Monica. Shit. Give me the poem again. I want to reread it. Ah, fuck. I'll have to, like, go through the stream later. It's been influencing my poems a bit. On to you. An epiphany. So, she was looking out, and I'm, I guess I'm looking in. Is she? Uh, this is going to break the fourth wall, isn't it? That's what's going on. Uh, kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. 
<sighs> Why you do this to me, Katie? Oh. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. You try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. That actually kind of... <coughs> shit. Kind of goes for everything. It's no good if you try to perfect it right off the bat. And hell, you even don't need to perfect it at all. Get started with something and refine it and make it good. If you worry about perfection, you'll never get it done. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pin on the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for it today. She says, hawking a loogie. Ah, stupid nose. Thanks for listening. Uh, Sari. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Alex! Eh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sari must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Like, seriously, I had words up on the wall and I threw darts at them. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Clearly. Because I swear, some of the most random things you jumped up for when I clicked on them. Like, lazy? <coughs> Come on. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh, well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's it's a, a an Alex poem. Come on, get your grammar right. You're part of the literature club. How can you expect to write a good poem if you can't never mind. And that makes it feel extra special. I can feel your feelings in it. Sari hugs the sheet against her chest. Okay. I agree, other me. I agree. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact I'm standing in front of you in the club room. <laughs> eh, well, of course. Not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See, it's like I said before, Alex. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people... That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. <laughs> He's... Alright. Then again, <coughs> I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Eh, we'll see about that. <laughs> I just saw the end. I want breakfast. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning and waking me up when I want to go back to sleep. Oh, wait, no, that's my version of it. Makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehand to help, forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Alright, Sayori. <laughs> this is just a guess, but <laughs> you fucking wrote it when she woke up. <laughs> no, of course not. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a... Yes, you can! You can always answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. God, other me doesn't know shit. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. <laughs> hey, you can't beat on her too much. That's when her inspiration struck. 
Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. Came out nice. Or, how should I put it? Sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. <laughs> I've made eggs and toast, even though you were late to school. <coughs> it's bad to skip breakfast. She's right. Gotta have that breakfast. Get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Yeah, this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, yeah. I don't trust Monica anymore. She wasn't on the interface. Also suspicious of her poem. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. How do you forget to start speaking? Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts in the words. No, hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a bunch of random words strung together, right? I don't know poems at all. Uh, so it's that bad. No! It, did I just raise my voice? I'm so sorry. Yuri Bur uh, Berries, berries, berries. Why? <sighs> the word is weird. Her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right. Um, just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and they form fit the two together. And the end result is that both style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds a train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Yeah. Sorry, nose was being a little shit again. That's okay, can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, <coughs> or Natsuki. <coughs> you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Cursive, ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I got it. I can words. Shut up. <coughs> I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Mm, nose. Uh. 
that's a relief. Also, I like I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in a ghost, Siri? You who who? Ha ha. What? Couldn't you say mm-hmm? Oh. I still don't know what that noise she was supposed to make was. Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Alex. I mean, it was about a streetlight, right? I assume something like incandescent being replaced with what? Neon? Uh, LED? Really? Must have totally missed the point. Maybe I'm missing the point, too. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. Something about past, future, I don't know, present. They usually do more than just tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her path, her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. It's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought about that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Alright, she's counting on me, guys. I gotta do it. I don't know what I gotta do, but I gotta do it. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> that was a little more stressful than I anticipated. Says this, everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all, and I am a weeb that reads manga and watches anime. Uh, excuse me. I sigh. Sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively <coughs> returns the poem to the desk on, with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? You just pushed your cute button. Ha <laughs> Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Oh. <laughs> I, I know that. I just meant... Don't lie. The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. <coughs> eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't help. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Come on, Natsuki, that's not how you take criticism. Be a nice girl. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Alex did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. Don't be a bitch. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Yeah. And Alex liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki steadily stands up. Oh. She's got that look. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, it's not what I... Uh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. 
Maybe you're just jealous that Alex appreciates my advice more than... Uh. <coughs> Alright. I am apparently the center of drama now. He appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Are you trying to say something, Yuri? I think you are. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Hawk <laughs> started showing up. Whoa. <laughs> That's hooky. Um, uh, Suzuki, Suzuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. Oh, I can't do a unison voice. I, 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 I don't have whatever. I don't like fighting guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. <laughs> Alex, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She's get over herself and learn to appreciate this simple writing is more effective. This wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out of the three. Do not force them to have to figure something out. I kind of agree with Natsuki to a degree, but I would say poems are also art, so you can write them however the fuck you feel like. <laughs> <coughs> If you want to convey your meaning effectively, then simple is better. But if you want something else, um, I wouldn't really know in the terms of poems and writing, then that's fine, because if, if you're trying to be artistic about it, you can do whatever the fuck you want. That's what art is, right? Help me explain that to her, Alex. Oh boy. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Alex? Uh... Well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? Not like I know anything about writing, but whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. <laughs> I can say, just help me, Sayori. I'll go with Cat Cake. Uh... Yuri, you're really talented. Eh, well, but Natsuki has a point. I think that. I racked my brain in an attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with few words can be just as impressive as well. Let's see reader's imagination take over. And Natsuki's poem did a really good job at that. Yeah. It did, didn't it? Ah. Uh -huh. So how much you know. That's not Natsuki. I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But she was so mean to me. That's what these voice whines. Look, what we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticisms can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sari is nodding vigorously. I want to see the vigorous nod. I can just imagine, like, a thousand RPMs. If you can measure nods in RPMs. NPMs? Nods per minute? <coughs> Yeah, so you don't need to feel threatened. You're a great writer, Natsuki. Uh, Natsuki voice gets caught in surprise. Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri, Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face like that, I couldn't help but feel bad as her. As with... I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean everything she said, so you don't need to feel threatened either. Well, if you say so. Hey... It's not really like you need to apologize for me, Alex. Sheesh. It's not like you were going to apologize. I think about... Oh, hold on. I'm going to do this every time. <laughs> That's who key glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? Alright, everyone close your eyes. <coughs> Unsurprisingly, Natsuki has a harder time with it than she, than she boasted. Sayori and Monica look away. Hmph. Anyway, 
The thing about your boobs, I didn't mean to say okay. Why'd you even have to bring boobs up? To, I mean, I guess other me is like all in it for the boobs. That's all. Atsuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Yeah, you're naturally beautiful, Yuri. Sayori? Uh, I'll go make some tea. <coughs> I was just trying to help. I'm sure she appreciated it, Sayori. I patched Sayori on the shoulder. <laughs> Nose, please stop. Well, now we're past that. Everyone's read each other's poems, right? I hope that was worthwhile for everyone. Especially you, Alex. And to be honest, it's nice. A change of pace from the lazing around we got a little too used to. <laughs> so, my joining the club was responsible for running the ruining the atmosphere. No, not at all. Not at all. There's still time before we go home. So we'll all relax for a bit. <coughs> of course. <laughs> Besides chatting, we do literature-related things in the club room. So maybe you can take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, it's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. <laughs> about what? That's not the most important thing about the literature club. Most important thing? What? Is it the power of friendship? Is having fun? Okay. Nah, <laughs> of course. Well, I guess that's why you're here, the vice president, Sayuri. <laughs> Still not a judge. <laughs> laugh. In the end, though, Monica's right. Being in the liturgy club probably means I can't spend all my time doing nothing. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Alright. Shit, about to hit the fan. Okay, everyone. Just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Alex, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone else. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. Did I learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes? With any luck, it means I can do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Alex, ready to walk home? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> hmm, Siri beams at me. It truly has been a while since Siri and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sorry, about what happened earlier. What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? <laughs> no, no, no. It's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? <laughs> ah. Stupid nose. No, I don't hate them. I just. Wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Alex, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. <coughs> I'm ready to be done with this stuffy nose. Uh, and I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Supposedly, the atmosphere of the game so far would have me lead. Ugh. Nose, nose, please, no more. Ah. Looks like Sierra still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Fuck. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just funny to me. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. <coughs> She's just... It just makes me think of Rubber Duck debugging. 
Any maze. Pink. I wonder who Massacre goes for. <laughs> God, Yuri. <laughs> Parfait is obvious. Kawaii. Suicide? Jesus. I'm worried about Yuri now. <laughs> Games? Oh, wow. She tries to be all cutesy. Heaven since. Oh, the universe. Huh. Existence, rain cloud, I don't know. Ambient? No rain cloud. Wrath, sensation, giggle. Boop. Any more boop? Hold on, this is probably Yuri. Depression goes to Sayori? I'm so confused right now. Doki Doki. Always go for the Doki Doki. Email? <laughs> okay. Electricity. That's weird. Boop! Always go for boop. Crimson. Oh. I guess because it's a big word. <laughs> <coughs> Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Let's see. I might go to about 1 o'clock because then I'll need to go to bed. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Sayori. Yo, Sayori, what up, dog? Looks like you're in a good mood today. Eh heh heh. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, at, that's all. Uh, I see. It's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you and you. Way. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Hi, hungry. I'm Alex. They come with me to <coughs> bite <coughs> a snack. <coughs> no thanks. I <coughs> just denied. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? <coughs> no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it to see that you have no money. Using me as a wallet. <coughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Oh, man. Uh. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Let's have a guess. Um... What, are we doing yen or cents and dollars here? They haven't exactly given the location for this sort of thing. It's clearly Japanese themed. We'll do dollars just because. 20 cents. Um, what would she have in there? A paper clip and we'll say some gum. I don't know. I was kind of close. Two dimes. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. I like that line. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? 
I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Sure. Tell Alex to let me borrow some money. What? You can't do that. Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. That's right. Don't get her involved. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <laughs> did I just... I didn't mean that. No, you totally meant it. <coughs> Don't take it back. <coughs> oh, here it is again. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the... Revolution? Yep, she accepted the revolution, guys. <laughs> that. Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, <laughs> you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to check Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Eh. Pwap! Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Oh, what was... Eh, a, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is is this a miracle? No, it's Natsuki smacking in the face with a cookie. It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. N Natsuki. That's... <laughs> she doesn't care that she got smacked in the face with a cookie. <coughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just to eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Hold on. So good. Does it work? I don't know. Sayori, Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Good job. Going through a lot over just one cookie, Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, yours, yours look really good too, Natsuki. You can't have all the cookies. Can Sayori, no. Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers, but yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Ha! <laughs> Did she give her the oatmeal raisin? <laughs> Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> oh, there it goes. There's the Doki Doki Lesbian Club again. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie's still in the hand. Natsuki reaches up to, snu to nudge Sayori off of her. Om? Um? What? Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Ha. Uh, you got got. Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Ah ha 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 ha. Ah shit, the tightest laugh would have been perfect there. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Well... I guess this is, this is where shit gets fucked up, isn't it? Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. <coughs> yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Well, as I hear, this whole game's unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after a while. <laughs> Someone to do or some... Or, oop, I, I got the punchline too soon. Something to do or someone to do. I, I tried. I, I'm sorry, guys. 
She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... She has her own cookie, yes. I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all, all of us combined. Whatever. I am way more desirable than all of you. <coughs> yeah, that's true. Excuse me, princess. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. Okay, maybe shit doesn't quite hit the fan yet. I didn't mean to be late. Sure. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But <laughs> Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica <coughs> quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyways? Ah, see, I had this great chocolate chip cookie on the way over. No, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. You must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music at all, or, uh, as well, Monica. What? Alex, run, it's a trap. Don't, <laughs> you don't want this. <laughs> I think it's too late. Oh, hold on. I have a text. What is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's too late. I've been ensnared. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay. I am out. <laughs> Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Alex. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean to any pressure or anything like that. Oh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. <coughs> and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? You missed a cookie. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. Shinatsuki will end up co complaining to her anyways. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Probably someone else's too. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me unex or expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out of my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands and quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know? I just wanted to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put it put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Probably baking. <laughs> oh, the chapter ended when <coughs> Minori and Alice found Monica. <coughs> Natsuki's voice resonates from <laughs> oh uh oh. Yeah? I pee inside. All Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Ah, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet, so I had to move some stuff around to clean up a little bit. It's all still there. I just had to organize it a bit. <coughs> uh, top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. Whoops. She makes a fetal hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez, this is so inconvenient. Moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste them on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki. There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging from the wall. You know what? I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. Think I'm too short of something? Yeah, that's exactly what I think. I mean, I knew it. Well, you know what? 
just watch me. Natsuki hops onto the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Ah, careful. I know what I'm doing. Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. <coughs> stool would be an, enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Hold on. Oh, wait. There we go. Oh, I didn't go far enough back. You get the idea. <laughs> Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Uh, Kaya! Uh, the box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls on the floor. The stool wobbles. Wah wah. Makes me want to say a wah buffet. <laughs> Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez, no need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it. I don't want your help, okay? Fine. Kill yourself. I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Alright, now while she's away, just bring down the boxes. Tsuki forces away past me to the closet. Let's see. Classroom chairs all have, uh, uh, have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit into the closet. Uh-huh. Natsuki traps trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. Oh god, that's not gonna end well. She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah, uh, It's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls, but I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. <coughs> um, ush, I guess. Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Ah, there we go. See? I can easily do it now. Tsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Wow! That's what she sounds like. Precisely. Perfect replication. The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on this shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it that told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Oh, the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. Hyphen. I can... I can almost see upper skirt? Gah. Don't know what kind of sound that is. Force myself to turn away. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Hup. Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set, easily the largest one on the top shelf. Uh, heavy. Hey, Alex, I, I don't think I can bend down without falling. Hurry and take this one, and then the chair is going to whoosh out from underneath her. <coughs> I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right, let me just stand up. Slowly release my grip from the chair, and she falls, and... <laughs> Why are you all the way back? Eh, eh. Oh, she, she figures it out. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the hyphen. You're trying to get a look at my... At my... Matsuki's like, shake. Blah. I'm not. I was just... Matsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You you perv. You set me up. Go away. Get out. Alright, let's leave. Let's just keep let her stay on the chair. <laughs> Chair suddenly swivels behind Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Ah! Uh, the scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands. The books go flying, and they all get bent. I got you. Crash. Apparently, I don't. <coughs> the full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. <coughs> a whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Oh, it's one of these scenes, huh? Unga. That's what it said. Unga. Not just ug, but unga. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Uh, uh, hold on. Let's go far enough back. Here we go. 
Okay. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Gick! What's that supposed to be? Look. I, I, I don't know. She presses her arm straight into me to prop herself up. Uh, Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor she, that's beneath her. Goo? Guh? Um, that's the only ways I can think of to pronounce that. Oh, gross! Gross! Gak! I remember Gak. I had some Gak when I was little. That was great. A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking, you sicko? Everything okay over there? <coughs> I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica, see what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your cub members or something? Jeez. Sorry, sorry. Uh. Oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. Yep, you got me. Total perv. So I hope you're happy. I didn't... No, just, just go with the flow, man. Just say, yeah, total perv. Yeah. Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. Just tell her it's an anime trope. She'll get it. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know. Don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh, no. My. My. It's bent. I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing the yell, she just lowers her head. Sob, she says. Natsuki, are you... No. Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears in her face. Uh, I'll help you get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No, I don't even care that much. I'm just... having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... It's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her, so I only do what I know how to do. Alright, well, I'll help you clean this up and I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Uh, I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help you cheer up for a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Eh? It sounds like really strange coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well, I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Hmm. Nah. I feel like these grunts could be a little better written. <laughs> Or something. I don't know what they're supposed to be. Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I could do. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin a gathering the scattered books. Mm. Make sure to slip them into the box in the correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist a box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then I get to school and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. And not the chair, because I'm not dumb. Mitsuki averts her gaze, because she clearly doesn't want to look up my skirt. <laughs> Thanks. Ah, 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 ah. What's with those weird laughs? Ah, ah, ah. I don't even know what they're supposed to be. It's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. Think about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. 
She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. <coughs> after some time, Monica gets her attention as usual and it's time to share poems again. Oh yeah, we wrote poems. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep! Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> I'm just going to monotone those from now on. Told you. Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem first to? Two first. Same thing. Boop. Dot, dot, dot. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Erg? Question mark? Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good. Okay? There, I said it. Ugh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. Aw, she wants to impress me. <coughs> you trying to impress me? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. You. Natsuki's face freezes. Like she just realized something. Y you. You trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I, I have to use the bathroom. Oh, I bet you do. Red face, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. <laughs> hey, Alex. Did you do something to Natsuki? Oh, you bet. <laughs> I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No. I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm? <laughs> Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I, I mean, I, I want to know what I wrote. <laughs> I mean, some of the words I chose, like suicide, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I just wanted to see who would, uh, <coughs> <coughs> um, who would go for that word. I, I mean, not really. In fact, didn't you like your poem a lot the other day, too? Oh, that's Monica's... Oh, whatever. I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Alex? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. On to you, Monica. You're asking if I looked it up on a wiki. Aren't you? I don't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. There's just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. <coughs> Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course. I liked it. Ugh! You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. It's technically for everyone, isn't it? You have a bad habit of doing that. Uh... But Alex wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Uh, hold on. Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Alex is done sharing this poem with everyone. <laughs> Whoa. <coughs> it's not like anyone would want to read this anyways. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Uh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, but uh, it's not very fair to say, Ori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Alex was right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. All right, fine. This is my only copy. <coughs> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. 
That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound. No, well, pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with hers or her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Okay. <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. I feel like this is a poem about Yuri. <laughs> like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how oh, everyone thinks my... Oh, I think I know what it is. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to read, to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of peop that people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that doesn't make people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday. I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? Ah, ah, ah. Well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Jeez. Just look forward to tomorrow, too, okay? Alright, I will. <coughs> Who should I show my poem to next? Hi, Sayori. Ooh! I like this one, Alex. It has some nice feelings in it. Like suicide. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. Eh, I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no, I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Alex. Never, ever. Eh, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. Then how can you make a decision on that? <coughs> That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. I agree, other me. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> right then. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want me to write something for me? <coughs> oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Oh, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes I like a little bit of both. Yeah, I can't tell what you like. You like the most random words on the poem screen. There's a word for that, right? Um, scatterbrained? <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Oh, okay, I guess. <coughs> yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. 
Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Yeah, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Alex. Just go write, a, go write that down, then. You can read my poem now, okay? And bottles. Oh, this is a long one. Shit, man. Why are they all writing longer poems? Bottles. Oh, I almost read that first line as I poop off my scalp. <laughs> all right. It <coughs> definitely doesn't say poop. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put, in a, I put it in a bottle and keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feels, or my, sometimes my fe friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in my or in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts on shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be more for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Does this mean theory is crazy? <coughs> Holy crap. Harry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect anything like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. I've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing till I die! Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sari's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. <coughs> but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Hmm. Alright, I feel like I'm getting to a point in the game. I'm getting close to a bedtime, but I feel like soon is going to be a point where things take a turn and I'll, I don't know, I'll either want to drop the game or keep going. I can't tell yet. <laughs> So what is it? Do, should I save what, uh, whatever twist or whatever for the next, probably tomorrow, or keep going? I do need to go to bed. Uh, let's go to Yuri. I still got a poem though. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Alex. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Well, I'm not. I'm not done tonight. Is it? Is it does it? Does shit happen after this day or what? Because I feel like I should consume that all in one go. So, like, tell me when a good stopping point is. I guess. So I'm at least going to finish this part. But I remember, I think you said like three days is when it picks up or whatever. I'm about at the end of that third day. Coming from you, that means a lot. Huh? It 
It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. <coughs> <coughs> Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I think that says ordinary. Unordinary? I think it's unordinary. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of, it, of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread of my hungry curiosity, the raccoon an urge. The moon, and s the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. I could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more infrequently. No. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. What? Is she saying she's a raccoon? You have to get to the end of the day before the festival. I don't even know about a festival. They did mention a festival. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. <coughs> I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. <coughs> I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh. That's funny. Ah. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Yeah? She, she did? Yeah. She's talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Yeah, I mean, she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have a lot of co or that much in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ya yeah, damn right it is. Both of ya. Please don't tell her I said that. Okay. Oh, don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad you said you... Or, I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. 
Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? <coughs> we won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah has been working on posters, and I've di designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. We're going to have bongos? Do a little bongo performance. <laughs> Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. <coughs> Sari is putting it all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sari, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to all to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes in her or shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put out a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. <coughs> That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all up and we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two, or two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Itsuki and Yuri remain silent. <coughs> Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I've got to give the rousing speech. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh... Hey, you. <laughs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over it, get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha, that's everyone. This weird laughs everywhere. <coughs> You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. <coughs> she then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica bins, begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. I hope they don't expect me to read this poem with her perfect inflection. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. 
Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you so much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quick, quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After, in after image of a crimson eye. <coughs> Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of, fierce of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. <clears throat> Wonderful! <coughs> yeah. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem through her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerf cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <coughs> uh -huh. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. <coughs> How did you guys do it so easily? Um, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. Hey, she said she liked bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to read. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. <coughs> Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Sayori. Even Alex liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? Came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you nice, or really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. We might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Alex. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Alex lower everyone's... Ugh. Thanks, Natsuki. Thanks a lot, Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. <laughs> But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium and read off my random selection of dartboard words. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I reset my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Wimp. <coughs> Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. 
Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Poem was called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? That's an amazing name for a poem. Because you're presenting. Huh. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. <coughs> it's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when she's spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if given as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. It wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. <coughs> it might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to reside instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting on all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Eh, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. I think I can. The little engine that could. Little Yuri that could. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh <laughs> heh Little giggly thing. Jeez, guys. Don't make it such a big deal out of it. <coughs> Must be a little nice, though. Well, um... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Alex. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Whatever. I walk home with Siri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. <laughs> Sorry, I was spacing out. No, oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. <coughs> so, let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? Well, what would you do? What kind of question is that? Kind of putting me on the spot here. And... Well, nah, man. <laughs> Walking home with Natsuki, huh? What is the thought that make me heart pound? I mean, I think I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she, isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Aha, you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe, but I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. <coughs> what was all that about? Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if something that makes me her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. And again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Apparently the game's gonna 
turn the fuck around. <coughs> Alright, should I do this poem and start the next day or just save here? Because apparently shit's going to happen soon. And it's 1 o'clock. I'd like to get to bed. <laughs> Is anyone still in there? No. I'll go ahead and save anyways. That's the wrong button. Boop. Boop. Basically, I'd rather not... I guess get to the, f the start of the part that'll fuck me up. And then have to stop it. I'd rather... At least get a good chunk of that in one go. So is this a good stopping point? Yay nay. Hello. <coughs> Alright. Well feel like I'm getting closer. So I'll go ahead and continue more tomorrow. So I do like going to work not tired and sleepy. And um, yeah, we'll see why the hell Monica's not over here. See you not being there. You're up to something. Alright, goodbye till tomorrow.